on this special edition of War Week Boxing on this Thursday night. The pay-per-view numbers are in from Amazon Prime, PBC, Tim Zhu versus Sebastian Fondora. And they are bad. We're going to go into this in great length on the tonight's edition of War Week Boxing. Stay tuned, guys. Holdings proudly presents War Week Radio Chats with ring announcer Joseph Heron. Oh boy, it is not a beautiful day in the neighborhood if you're a PBC fan. Oh my word. And if you're a boxing fan, period, in the American market, guys, this is bad. Whoo! Wow. This dips even below what I originally projected. And the numbers I originally projected for Tim Zhu versus Sebastian Fondora were meager at best. But this is even worse. Wow. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome to this special Thursday night edition of War Week Boxing. And I um, want to get your guys' take um on this so please click the link if you guys have your headphones on i want to get you guys all of your thoughts on this but guys big shout out to our very um generous sponsor affordable dentures and implants guys over 440 locations nationwide as well as rod Vashon holdings the best realtor in the south texas area um but guys these are bad the numbers are in. I'll tell you what, big shout out to Big J.R. Bell, James from The Boxing Source. He gets the skinny and he publishes the numbers on his latest edition of The Rumor Mill. As soon as we get a little more, a uh, couple more viewers in the chat. Yeah, I'm going to read this article. This is shocking, guys, to a lot of people. Or maybe not. I want to get your thoughts. Guys, is this shocking or is this exactly what you expected? So I'm about to read this article published on theboxingsource.net, who is the first to reveal all of these pay-per-view numbers. Um, and obviously he doesn't reveal his source. Um, and I'm not going to reveal mine. I'll share my numbers. Um, I'll tell you what, let's give a big shout out right now, though, to our brother, Jesus M. Welcome to the show, sir. Saludos to you, my friend. And he says, well, Canelo versus Mungia is going to tank, especially undercard. Just horrible. Um, well, look, I'm going to go into that and explain why the undercards for these very high priced um, purses, right, for the main event. Um, and I'll tell you exactly how the money breaks down in just a bit and who actually funds these undercards and these preliminary bouts, right? So thank you for hanging with me, Jesus. I appreciate it. Oh, and here's good news, Jesus. I know you're um, you're you're a big fan of Coach James Gogi, and who is it? He is oh, by far the sharpest eye in the business. I've said this a lot. He's got the sharpest, best set of eyes in the business. And this is why a lot of promoters will actually pay him for his analysis of prospects, right? 
good news. He's going to be on this Sunday. Okay? So look forward to that, my friend. And thank you for hanging with us, my brother. Um, Elysia Feliciano. Thank you. I bought the fight as well. So I was one of the... Mm, yeah, we're going to disclose that number in just a bit. Oh, boy. And yeah, it's not good news, guys. Larry Liston, welcome to the show, Double L. He says, got a fantastic idea for making the Ryan versus Haney event a spectacle. Let Ryan come out with Trump and Haney come out with P. Diddy and his crew with the village people playing in the background. <laughs> Which one would you choose? Would you choose YMCA? Or would you choose in the Navy? <laughs> That's the extent of my knowledge of their discography. Otherwise, I, I, I oh gosh. <laughs> oh no, Real Merc TV. Thank you. Welcome to the show, sir. Devin the Wet Dream Haney with P. Diddy. Holy cow, the Wet Dream. <laughs> But guys, don't make me laugh because this is no laughing matter, guys. I'm about to read you something, and I want you all to bookmark. Yeah, I know. It's hard not to laugh. It's impossible not to laugh at that. And Jesus M., good news indeed, right? Okay, Sunday, good to hear Coach. It's going to be great to get Coach back on the air where he belongs. Guys, Coach Gogi, if you didn't know, once again, he is a geyser of experience and knowledge within this business. And honestly, he's got the best set of eyes. And I can't even remember when the last time he's got a fight prediction incorrect, right? So, guys, um, he's going to break down Haney versus Ryan Garcia. And his prognostication may indeed surprise a lot of people. So, you got to tune in on Sunday. Eric Rosas, welcome to the show, sir. He says, I honestly do not buy pay-per-views anymore. Sorry, I already pay for the internet. So if I know how to use it to my advantage, I will. The prices are too high for the quality. Well, that's your prerogative, sir, but I'm going to lay it down and let you know how it's affecting your beloved boxing and your favorite pastime. And it's not good. But what can you do? It's just like Napster. What did Napster do to the music industry? Hmm? What did Napster do? What did the internet do to the music business? It tanked it. So now you get a bunch of cheap crap music at your fingertips. But Eric, do you ever think you're ever going to get another Beatles Abbey Road? Because no one is investing. No one is investing a lot of money in creating the best product possible. So this is what it does. If you don't like the product, well, that's exactly what it does. You're basically stealing the product. And do you really think you're going to get the best matchups available? Do you really think the best fighters in boxing are going to fight for peanuts? And if they do have a high price guaranteed purse amount like Canelo Alvarez, do you really think that networks and promoters are going to want to pay for them to step in the ring from this point forward if you do not purchase it? Understand. Look at what it did. Oh, hold on. It's already destroyed. I can't. Oh, okay. Keep, keep thinking that. Because that's not the reality. The Saudis right now are basically, with the month of May and the month of June, they are giving us the best fights possible, which is going to be two undisputed unification bouts, respectively, between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk, the fight that we've all been waiting for. And then we've got the big one in the light heavyweight division on June 1st. Arthur Baturbiev versus Dmitry Bivol. And the only reason why we're getting it is because the Saudis have agreed to pay them exorbitant amounts of money. No thanks to you, Eric. And no thanks to the overwhelming majority of boxing diehard fans 
who religiously steal this. This is a huge problem for boxing. Guys, why do you think we're getting Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson? And why do you think? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not surprised. You know what, brother? Not surprised. Heard Hearn, Double L says, Heard Hearn saying he wanted to make boots undisputed in the next 18 months. That's an extremely bold statement. My thoughts? Well, look, unless he can magically turn Boots Ennis into a ticket seller, best of luck with that, unless he can get the Saudis to pay for it. Now, once again, guys, everyone is looking at Saudi Arabia to be the solution for all of their favorite fights being made. But I'm sorry to tell you guys, they're only going to stage between six and eight events per year. I know this for a fact. So are there enough mouths to feed? Is that enough for all the mouths to feed? All of the prize fighters who are looking for dates and opponents? No. Between six and eight events per year. And from what you've already gathered, guys, I don't need to tell you this. The Saudi royal family favor heavyweights. So I'm saying, guys, you better start purchasing these things if you want to. You better subscribe. You better at least subscribe. That's the that's the least you should do. Okay, if you want to see these matchups materialize. Otherwise, yeah, you get what you get. Okay, uh, once again, I'm going to give you an analogy. Um, if you think the customer is always right, the customer actually spends money. When is the last time a business has ever referred to a shoplifter as a customer? And Eric Rosas has the beat. It's only a matter of time before the Saudis yank their investment. I give it a year. That's it. So then what are we going to do? What is it going to do? What are we going to do as fans? Saudi money is only temporary fill, not sustainable. Yes, sir. Jesus M has the beat. Is Davis versus Martin contingent on Canelo versus Munguia? Yes, it is. Have you heard an announcement? Have you seen tickets go on sale? No. Guys, and I'm going to start reading the article just dropped by our brother James Bell from the Boxing Source. I'll share it with you guys. Oh, there I am. Hey, how you doing, guys? <laughs> I call it the um, Casey Kasem effect. I sound a lot younger than I look. And there it is. Um, here it is. I accidentally hit the wrong button when I was trying to present the article. Here it comes, guys. Um, I'll go into tank. And PVC in just a second. Hold on, guys. Here it is. Tell me if you guys can see this, okay? Can you guys see this okay? This is the boxing source.net, right? It's called the rumor mill. Tim Zoo, not a draw in the US. I'm gonna read this to you guys. Last month, the WBC, and once again, this is penned by our friend James Bell from the Boxing Source. And he said, last month, the WBC and WBO super welterweight titles were up for grabs as Tim Zhu and Sebastian Fundora battled through 12 rounds. It was highlighted by a massive cut on the top of Zhu's head and a broken nose suffered by Fundora, which led to a gruesome bout that was won by Fundora via split decision. Fundora handled, handed Zhu his first professional loss, and the latest rumor is that the event did not do well on pay-per-view in the U.S. While there were clear factors that affected the fight card, Keith Thurman's injury, the plan was to introduce Tim Zhu to the American market, which could lead to, <coughs> excuse me, which could lead to bigger fights later in the year. Having Zhu as the lead in the March 30th card on Amazon Prime was also of note, 
as that was a new platform to feature boxing. With that being said, the rumor about the numbers for this pay-per-view event don't look good. The word is that the amount of buys within the U.S. market were below 30,000. Once again, I'm going to repeat that. Well, I'm going to read that once again. The word is that the amount of buys within the U.S. market were below 30,000. You heard that correctly, guys. Below 30,000. And he goes on to say, once again, multiple factors may have played a part in this, but this is not good. Tim Zhu was linked to potential fights against the likes of Terrence Crawford, Jamel Charlo, and others. But not only is the loss of Fundora a setback, but numbers like this greatly affect his marketability in the U.S. That is right. Now, at this point, there hasn't been an estimate on how many buys this event did in Australia, as Zhu and fellow countryman Michael Zarafer were on the card. But the estimate given for America is not a good sign for future events that would be on Amazon Prime. On May 4th, Canelo Alvarez faces Jaime Munguia in an all-Mexican showdown that will likely generate better numbers on pay-per-view. However, this latest report is of great concern for boxing. I want to thank James Bell for publishing this outstanding piece of news. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's right. That's why I stated, Eric, the overwhelming majority of diehard boxing fans. Now, let's just let's just do logic, right? Let's just use logic. Um, what demographic did this fight card appeal to? Is this Tyson versus Paul? Did this appeal to casual and mainstream fans? Absolutely not. This almost exclusively appealed to the diehard fan base in the American market. And so when you look at less than 30,000, are there only 30,000 fans left in America? No. That's not even five. That may be five, between three and five percent. So deductive reasoning states. That that is the overwhelming majority. The overwhelming majority of interested diehard fans are illegally streaming the hell out of this stuff. Because everyone knew what happened during the fight. Most diehard fans saw it. I can guarantee it. But that's it. Everyone is stealing, and this is, in my opinion, aside from paying out inflated purses, this is the biggest problem in boxing. So what's the solution? Guys, I talk with promoters, trainers, fighters, people in the business all the time. And here's the sad part. This fight was actually worth the buy, too. Guess what? It played out to be a barn burner. It was an excellent fight that had it all. Drama, blood, grit, all balls, all action. And think about what we saw in the co-main event as well. It was worth the price of admission to see Isak Cruz turn Roly Romero into a bobblehead. You can't tell me you weren't entertained from that. Of course, it's not a pay-per-view fight. You're missing the point. I am your leader. This is on pay-per-view out of necessity because they don't have TV dates. How are you supposed to get the product out to fans if you don't have TV dates? You have to put it on pay-per-view. And if you want, if you don't want to have to pay for every major boxing event on pay-per-view, then you'd better subscribe because if subscription numbers on DAZN, don't increase, as well as ESPN programming numbers. If those don't increase, then this is what you have to look forward to, guys. Once again, if you're a longtime listener of this show, you know, you know that's exactly, well, hold on, brother, you're missing the point. 
if you don't like this medium, then you better subscribe. You better pay for subscriptions. Oh, boy. Look, well, then, hey, man, get used to watching, put uh, staging your fight parties. That's why I'm not paying for people. You don't get it. This is what you're looking forward to across the board in the American market. Either that or get used to circus events like Jake Paul versus um, Mike Tyson. Do you know why I am your leader? Do you know why we're seeing that in July? Do you know why Netflix was only interested in that? Because that appeals to a much larger mainstream and casual demographic, i.e. the demographic that's still spending money for these events. If you guys don't like it, there's only one, one way to rectify that, and that's financially support your favorite pastime. Is it actually your favorite pastime anymore? Anyway, guys, if you want to hear my pay-per-view numbers, I was keeping them close to the vest because I thought it was incorrect. I was like, there's no way that can be right. From my guy, who has a close working relationship with PBC, I was told that it only did, now brace yourselves, if you think 30,000 is bad, if you go to the article that I just read to you guys, Okay, James stated in the article it was less than 30,000. He didn't say how much less. He didn't say how close to 30,000 it was. But the number that I got, I, I thought, I'm like, there's no way this can be right. I'm not revealing these. But I can go ahead and say them now that James from the boxing source got the skinny and got the scoop. And I'm... Shocked that my number is correct now. I was told that it only did 23,000 purchases. I'm going to put that in writing just in case you guys didn't hear me correctly. You see that? That's the number that I got and I'm putting it right down there. 23,000. So James... Once again, he's been in this business for over a decade, and he has a very good working relationship with everybody. He was being nice. The real number, guys, is 23,000 purchases. I was hoping that that was incorrect, but according to James's figure, yeah, I know it's sadly true. Guys, at this time, I'd like to welcome my brother to the show. EJ, how you doing, my friend? How you doing, brother? How you doing, bro? That's oh, kind of shocking. I am man. shocked. I am shocked, brother. That is shocking. Right? And here's the thing. I'm one of those 23,000 purchases. Remember I told you. So am I. I'll, su I'll support the boxers I like. I, I, I actually like Tim Zhu, and I'll purchase another fight from him if, if it comes to it, but I wasn't, my wife bought it for me. She knew how much I liked Tim Zoo, so she bought it for me. I wasn't going to purchase it because I didn't want originally to see, um, I didn't want to see, I wanted Tim Zoo to fight somebody else at 154 other than Thurman. And I said, eh, I considered going out there because I liked Tim Zoo, but then, eh, I, you know, finances dictated to me that, that that wasn't a worthy purchase. Yeah. But my wife buying it for me, the, the pay-per-view, um, that was a gift. I'm not going to turn it down. So that being said, yeah. but yeah. 23,000, 20, 23, that, that speaks volumes. That, that speaks volumes as far as I, I, uh, you, you and I have talked about this a lot. I blame, I blame the promotional companies because they, they don't want to go all in on these boxers and not, and not back in the day, they used to advertise these boxing matches. You remember that? Let me ask you something, EJ, where's the money supposed to come from? If the overwhelming majority of their targeted demographic is stealing the product, where's the money supposed to come from for promotion of the event? It's a good point. 
that that that's an excellent statement. My thing is, give like I said this. I said this yesterday on your show. Give us give us a bunch of free events, and then give us select few pay per view events. I don't care. If the pay per view event is worth it, I'll pay a hundred dollars for a fucking pay per view. Look, 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 brother. This is, and we told you a long time ago, when everyone was celebrating. Oh, Al Heyman does it again. He gets an Amazon Prime deal. We told you that this was only a distribution deal, and yeah. pay -per and Al Heyman, PBC had to come up with the guarantees out of their own pocket. They had to fund all of this. Guys, why do you think we haven't seen an announcement of Tank Davis versus Frank Martin? Because everything hinges on the success of Canelo versus Munguia. They are all in. Let me ask you something. Now, once again, individual sponsorships go a long way. Okay, now let me tell you, Eric Rosas, how your numbers affect the individual sponsorships for the fighters. How are you supposed to justify the thousands of dollars that these fighters usually request without numbers to support it? How do you think the promoters are supposed to get sponsorship for the event if you don't have numbers to support it? Well, then what about advertising dollars? And why not just... That's uh, sponsorship. All right, but here, here's the thing. All right, back. In, who's who's gonna oh, hold on? If you're a business, are you gonna pay tens of thousands of dollars to advertise your product when it's only being viewed by twenty three thousand people? Guys, it's a symbiont industry. You have to understand how this works, and we've been telling you guys the business of it. But you guys don't want to hear it. What no, business? Just... What business can stay in business if everyone is shoplifting the booty? It's not well, sustainable, but, guys. But, all right, let, let's say um, let's go back to let's go back to the. Let's back to let's go back to the eighties. I hate going back because you know this is not the eighties, and I get it. But let's go back to the 80s and the 90s and stuff like that. When a, a huge boxing event, people would pay for commercial time on these boxing events. Because they weren't, guys, believe it or not, we used to have boxing on ABC, CBS, and NBC. Sometimes That's not. right. And you and I are both of the age where we can remember that. Do you remember back when Wide World of Sports and NBC used to show amateur the oh, US, yeah. U.S. box offs, the Golden Gloves. Do you remember well, that? Why can't we, we go back to we, that? Why do you think? PBC originally, guys, tried to put this on free TV, but without numbers, you can't attract Fortune 500 companies to pay for advertisements. Do you understand where you guys come in? Guys, this is a symbiont industry, and if you love this business, if you love this sport like you claim to, then you have to financially support it. There's no room any longer for dissension. There isn't. Either you support it or you don't. Look, I'm tired of this, this mentality. Look, why are you consistently, I am your leader, and I'm singling you out, my apologies for that, but you're not alone. Apparently, the overwhelming majority of, of diehard fight fans, supposedly, and I use that term loosely these days, support your, share your mentality. Why are you consistently rationalizing why you shouldn't financially support it if it's your favorite sport? Shouldn't you be doing the opposite? Hey, boxing is on life support in the American market. They're depending on all of its supposed diehard fans, like me, to purchase it. If that's your favorite sport, why wouldn't you rationalize that? Instead, you're rationalizing why you shouldn't. 
So, hey, get used to seeing all of your events overseas because either that or purchase a club ticket because that's going to become your only outlet to witness live boxing. And, 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 and who else? Who else on YouTube has been telling you guys that this was inevitable unless something changed? How do you change it, Joseph? I mean, look, it, it, uh, look, look I, I'm, I'm telling you how, but no one I, wants to listen. No one but, wants to hear. Here's a, look, look just several, several things, several things, several things, guys. And it's not just you. It's not just the fans. Okay, don't don't think that I'm singling you guys out there. Everyone right now, and I said this on last night's show. If you hadn't heard it, it's still up. Check it out after this. But guys, everyone in the business is currently acting in their own selfish best interest. Look at Dave Benavides. No, I'm not going to fight Dave Morrell. There's no money in it. He's not ready. He hasn't had enough fights. Really? Okay, so you're upset with Canelo for seemingly avoiding you. And not fighting the best when you're doing the exact same damn thing to David Morrell. And the worst part about it is, do you know who the manager of David Morrell Jr. is? Louis Dacubas. Do you know who the manager of David Benavides is? Louis Dacubas Jr. It's father and son. That's a fight that you could easily make tomorrow. So why isn't it happening? Because everyone wants to act like Floyd Mayweather these days. Fighters are the biggest culprits as far as what's wrong with the sport. You've got these guys, even at the club level, avoiding the best opposition and demanding life-changing money. Something has to give, guys. I just saw a video today in which Subriel Matias said, oh, I'm not interested in a fight with Haney. He has nothing, and he won't take the fight anyway. So keep my name out of your mouth. All of these guys are playing rock star on social media. All the while, they're not getting in the ring and facing the best. And they want to be paid millions for it. That's what's wrong also with boxing. So two things have to change. One, you guys need to start rationalizing why you should financially support it and not the other way around. Quit trying to rationalize why you shouldn't. And if this is your favorite pastime, then damn it, pay for it. And two, these fighters need to quit having this entitled, this sense of entitlement. Like who the hell are they? If they price themselves out, and they want inflated purses, then you know what? Sit your ass down and we'll find someone who's willing to walk through fire for market value, for fair market value. If you price yourself out like Devin Haney, kiss my ass and sit down. We don't need you. So the two biggest problems in the business within the American market are inflated purses and piracy. And, um, and unfortunately, neither side is willing to concede. So you tell me, how do we solve it, EJ? I I, I try to come up with a solution uh, just here on YouTube, but you know I've been shot down so many times where the where where the people would have control over it, where YouTube and and a specific as you know like a specific YouTube channel do it and and promote it and the 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 people that will actually want to see it will pay for it and it, it's just it's just so i i because i'm so um misinformed or uh don't have enough knowledge on the on the business and the boxing i don't know how to fix a problem like this all i know is that i can me personally i do what i can I'll okay. go to boxing so, matches. So then, I will what, pay for so, so then I tell you what, I'm getting really sick and tired of being the only one leading the charge here. I need everyone to start hosting fight parties. Start being the ambassadors that you should be. Start educating 
these casual and mainstream, your casual mainstream friends. Teach them everything you know about boxing. Get them fascinated in it. Right? How did you fall in love with the sport? I grew up with it. And mind you. That's right. Well, guess, guess what? These guys, we're still reeling from the reek of Floyd Mayweather Jr. I hate yeah. to say that because I love me some Floyd. Right? In my opinion, the best defensive fighter I will ever see in my lifetime. One of the all-time greats. But I'm going to quote you a friend of mine who is a casual and mainstream observer. And he, he used to love boxing. We used to watch all the fights together. He said, you know what, Joseph? I'm just not a fan anymore. Because I'm sorry. Maybe I'm stupid. He said, maybe I, I don't know, understand the sweet science. But I, from a personal perspective, I just... Like, I just want to see more fight in my fights. And you can't blame him. Look at the product that Floyd gave us after he moved up to 47. Did he really look like he was interested in fighting or surviving? Once he got his first huge check, wasn't that with uh, with um, uh, De La Hoya? Yes. Once he had to fight with De La Hoya, yes. And, and yes. Right, right after that, yes. he changed. Yes. Right after that, he was interested in just making it a points game, a numbers game. I'm going to shut down defensively. I'm going to shut down your offense, and I'm going to pick and poke and defensively win all of these rounds. But then that's, giving, when, that's when giving, it's up to us to not support that, that, that kind of bullshit. That's, that's when it's up to us. That's what I just said. Be the ambassadors. Teach these guys. Teach these casual fans. Hey, you know what? That's He's just being defensive safety first. He's being safety minded. Defensive minded. Where it's very strategic and it's very skill oriented. But it doesn't leave much to the imagination of the casual and mainstream fans. You guys need to be the ambassadors. You guys know all this stuff. You guys grew up with it. You guys are lifers. Okay, in case you just joined us, guys. I'm going to post this number one more time. Guys, in the immortal words of Pat Summerall, don't adjust your TV sets. 23,000 purchases for Zoo versus Fundora on March 30th. Yep, uh, that's it. That's the sad truth, guys. So why do you think we're seeing these circus events, guys? And once again, it's not just you guys. It's the fighters as well. Somewhere along the way, and I attribute all of this to the success, the financial success of Floyd Mayweather. And Double L has the beat. Floyd Mayweather blueprint is destroying. No, no, no. It's past tense now, brother. Has destroyed. destroyed the business. Why do you think all of my efforts are at the local and regional levels now? Because now I am catering to a more organic fan base. Guys who actually want to like the sport. Because it's, it seems to be a lost cause on the national level. If you don't care, now let me put it to you where hopefully you understand this, guys. Because obviously you guys all know the sport and you guys all love it. But if you don't give a shit and if you're not willing to purchase purchase it, then who will? G Funky, welcome to the show, sir. Also another boxing lifer, a guy who purchases. He was one of the 23,000. Man, you're just a casual and don't 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 know the sweet science. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yep. And double L has the beat. I always said that fighters have a personal responsibility in making the customer entertain. If they're just coming to win and coming to receive a paycheck, it's gonna leave uh, fans with a bad taste. Yes, sir. Now, why do you think Canelo chose? Why do you think Canelo chose Jaime Munguia? Hmm? 
Why do you think he chose him? Because this is a guy who's going to guarantee all balls, all action. Because his last pay-per-view, how many fans who purchased that event walked away happy? Not a one. Exactly. No, no, I didn't. And here's the worst part about it. Jermel Charlo made $10 million for that effort. I'm going to repeat that again. Jermel Charlo made ten thousand or ten million dollars just to survive. And what people, what bothers me? Let, let, let's take that entire situation there. All right. What bothers me the most about that is people will try to justify that and say, "Well, why doesn't he fight Benavides? Right? Why doesn't Canelo fight Benavides? For that fucking. I'm sorry. For that damn reason, I, I got to remember I'm on with somebody else's. No, 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 no. That's all right. Hold on. Hold on. For, for that, Hold on. For that Hold exact on. same reason, is he really going to get the best fight? Because we all know Mungia is going to throw it out there. He's going to so, put it so all once, out there. Once again, so that's the matchup that everyone wants to see. That's undeniable. Yes. But how can you say that's the best fight because you haven't seen it play out yet? Look, for all intents and purposes, Hyman Mungia versus Canelo could be fight of the year. It's the best style matchup. Both guys are going to sit in the pocket and they're going to stare at each other, banging each other in a phone booth. Okay? I give Mungia a better shot against okay. Canelo than Listen than to this. Than, uh, Benavides. L listen to this. Oh, we're going to get to the bottom of that because I need to hear more. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so gather your thoughts, brother. I want to hear all about that, my friend. But we sure. want to welcome our dear friend who's been hanging with War Week Boxing. Um, and that's why we're called War Week Boxing, because of Don War Week Chargan. He taught me everything I know about this often brutal and ass-beating business. And he remembers we used to feature Don weekly, right? We used to feature Don every single week, and it was glorious how many stories and how much wisdom came out of that podcast before it was called a podcast, right? He said, Don Chargan told us, say your prayers. May PAC better live up to its billing or else it won't be good for the health of the sport. And Don and his infinite wisdom was absolutely right on the money. We're still reeling from that. Do you remember how many people wanted a refund? Do you remember that, guys? I remember buying that, and I remember uh, having a watch party at, at the at the at my current house at the time. And uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The only people who were happy at the outcome were people who were all over Floyd Mayweather's jock. Mm -hmm. Jock riders, fanboys, that's it. Real fight fans, did we see a fight that night? Now compare that, guys, to the very first Showtime broadcast ever. Showtime Championship Boxing in the 80s. Um, uh, Marvin Hagler, the marvelous one, God rest his soul, versus John the Beast Mugabe. How was that in comparison to... The fight of the millennium. That was a slobber knocker. Oh, my word. That was the gift that kept on giving. In fact, I remember watching it with my dad. And we videotaped it. And we wore the hell out of that videotape. On old VHS. In fact, when company used to come over, we used to play that all the time for him. One of the greatest fights we ever saw and that was John the Beast Mugabe moving up in weight, challenging an undefeated knockout artist, John the Beast Mugabe, challenging the great Marvin Hagler, the kingpin at 160. Now compare that to Jermel Charlo moving up in weight to face Canelo. Man, he just fought like he was collecting a check. That was it. That's it. That's it. Hold, hold on. Hold on with that one, Joe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I tell you what, guys, and once again, big shout out to James Bell for breaking the news 
And let me tell you, this is going to create a huge ripple effect over the next couple of days. And we got it first, thanks to Big J.R. Bell. Thank you. And I just revealed my numbers because I didn't want to do it until I was actually, yeah, um, saw someone else do it as well. But yes, unfortunately, sadly, I was right. The numbers are abysmal, guys. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And once again, guys, it's not just PVC. You can blame it on PVC all you want. But numbers have already proven that you guys aren't buying shit anywhere. How have the Saudi pay-per-view numbers looked since they started with Fury versus Ngannou? Actually, I don't know. What do those numbers look like? The very first event, and I thought it was abysmal. They did well over a million in the UK market. Okay. Really? Yep. But in the US, only 78,000. Now compare that to Zoo versus Fundora. That seems like a stark success in comparison. Hmm. That's, I hate to say it, man. So guys, guys, I invite all of you guys, if you want more of the same, and once again, I think it's a brilliant idea um, because James is so knowledgeable and he has so many great relationships that he's built over the past decade in this business. If you guys want the skinny, right, please bookmark my brother James, theboxingsource.net. Please bookmark that because um, from what he said last night, this is going to be a weekly column on his website. Please bookmark theboxingsource.net. If you want the skinny and if you want the latest gossip within the business, and I'm not talking about these trolls on, on Twitter. This is within the business. So credit to you, my friend. And I tell you what, I can't wait to hear what you have to say next week, brother. <laughs> and he goes, these recent pay-per-view numbers have been terrible in the U.S. across the board. So once again, guys, you can't blame this on a terrible product by PBC because apparently it's all terrible in your mind. You can't pin this one on PBC, guys. Who had the best schedule in your mind, Electro Jed, last year in boxing of all platforms? Well, I, uh, I said I thought I thought ESPN had uh, well, you know uh, top no, rank. Showtime? You didn't think Showtime and PBC had the best schedule? I was I was happier. No, Crawford, this Crawford just, Spence. This just really, me. hold on. No, 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 no. That was yeah. excellent. Don't get me wrong. They had the biggest events. All right, and that that's for sure. They had the biggest events, in which I paid for, no problem. My my issue is the the, the more satisfying one was for me. This is just a personal opinion. You, you know what? I, me, I can't blame you there because I me, really the more action well. packed, the, the more action packed, and the more satisfying. And, and you know what? And it was on the, the great majority of it, it, with the exception of um, Loma versus Haney. Aside from that, that lost them money as well. Um, that was shocking. It was way. on ESPN Plus or ESPN. So I can't argue with you there, brother. The most cost-effective and the most bang for your buck, obviously, was ESPN. But honestly, for my money, the best by far was Showtime and PBC. They had the biggest events, and they aggressively went out and purchased the biggest events. And how do we revenge? Hold on. Hold on. And how did we repay them? By not purchasing and not tuning in. Their their average subscription numbers were below 300,000 per per episode of Showtime Championship Boxing. That's not sustainable. And that's ultimately what tanked Showtime and that's what caused them to pull their investments. And so how are we looking at today? How are we looking today? We've got less TV dates and we've got more fighters sitting in idle. Is boxing better off without them? 
I know that you not too are bright, thinking, guys. If you're a fan of boxing, not too bright. Yeah, so people boy, are thinking sir, that Amazon is saving this, and Amazon ain't doing nothing but having a place for them to stream it on. But they're not they're not investing anything. So stop thinking. People need to stop thinking Amazon is saving it. No, they're not. No, they are not. And it, double L has the beat. Hold on. Taylor versus Tio. Robson versus Navarrete. That was this year. Robson versus Navarrete. That was um, yeah, that was the big Shakur versus Edwin De Los Santos. Just garbage fight. See, that's what I'm saying. These guys, they've got the WBC lightweight title on the line. They're being paid millions. And what do they give us? Now, I'm going to quote my casual and mainstream fight fan friend saying, you know what? Maybe I'm stupid. Maybe I just don't understand the sweet science. But call me crazy. I like to see more fights in my fights. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, Shakur I got to ask you a question. Hold on. Shakur versus Edwin De Los Santos. Um, that was... Oh, you're right. That was November, wasn't it, Hoodrich? Thank you, brother. Thank you. I keep forgetting Tiafimo versus um uh what's his name? The other kid who stunk out the joint <laughs> on Super Bowl weekend. You're yeah, right. yeah. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Hoodrich. I stand corrected. Thank you, brother. And thank you, double L. You are right. You are correct. Hey, salute to. That Mexican LT. Salute to you, Carnal. Look at this. I barely remember that many Showtime Championship boxing events last year. I don't. Like, honestly, by far, it was the best product. I remember Subriel Matias versus Eremias Ponce, and that was a barn burner. You're talking about the Sandro Martin fight, by the way. With oh, which one? No, no, no. It was, uh, J uh, what's his name? The the very last one. It was during Super Bowl weekend, dude. I can't Ortiz? remember his name because it was so unforgettable. Or you so about, forgettable. Uh, uh, you talk about the Ortiz fight? Yes. Jermaine Ortiz. Thank you. Um, yeah, that was shit, dude. Come um, on. Come I'm thinking, on, I'm dude. About, I, I, Let me think about the fight because I had to, I had to, I got, because I, I had to ask you a question. About the Shakur fight, because yep. people, because I, I have, I have a bone to pick with people that 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 shit all over that fight. No, like, no, no. Just, look, 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 look. Uh, EJ, I called it. I told you guys that look, there's a reason why Navarrete versus Robinson Contesial was in the co-main event, because that was going to salvage what was going to be a stinker of a main event. Right. Two counter punchers sitting and looking at each other all night. Waiting for the other guy to get off first? Yeah, that had stinker written all over it. But because the WBC mandated, there was nothing top rank could do about it. And that's the only reason. And yes, Double O remembers it. But do you really think that if Shakur got in the pocket, if, if Shakur got in the pocket with him, that that would have ended up well for him? Shakur, of course you, not. Of no. course not. He had to fight Santos, that he's a, one of the biggest punchers at 135. Yeah, but you know, what? To, but you know what? He's an absolute snoozer if you're not as stupid as Ryle Valenzuela and take the lead. If you try to force the action, he's going to make you pay for it. Shakur knew all about that, and that's why it was it like ended watching, up being a boring fight. That, yeah. That's why it was like watching paint dry. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, but, it was it was like going outside, pulling up a lawn chair, and watching your grass grow. But it, 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 but all right, listen. I understand that it wasn't action packed. But if you're any type of boxing head, you are. Oh gosh! If you are, you know that you you know. Don't try to gonna, justify that. Don't. Try I'm, not, to I'm, not, it. I'm not trying to justify it. I'm saying I understand it because if he would have went into the pocket with him, he would have got blasted. He had to fight him that way. 
Um, Come on, so there was no there, there, he, there was no other choice. He wasn't going to get in the pocket with him. No okay. way. So you're blaming all of the lack of action on Edwin De Los Santos? No, it was just, it was a conscious. Oh, decision and what the hell are you talking about? It's a conscious de de decision to fight a certain fighter a certain. Well, way. I tell you what, it was everyone's conscious decision then to walk out during the bout. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm it wasn't sorry, EJ, it wasn't EJ, EJ, <laughs> listen to me when I'm telling you this. Now, listen good. You cannot rationalize that kind of cowardice in the ring when you're getting paid millions of dollars. Did Marvin Hagler act that way when he was faced with the undefeated knockout puncher, John the Beast Mugabe? Did he act like he was afraid to get hit? Those were different breed of boxers. Oh my gosh, that's my point entirely. You can't rationalize it, EJ. It's rotten. It's a um, shit product. Okay. Rationalization and, is not the issue. So this is what this is my point, EJ. It's not just the fans, it's the fighters. Their mindset, their mentality has changed. They want to, oh man, I want to get that bag. For what? For what? Why do you deserve that kind of money? Are you giving us a product that we'll be talking about for years? Mugabe versus Hagler was in the 80s, and guess what? We're talking about it today. Is anyone going to be talking about Shakur versus Edwin De Los Santos decades from now? Only to shit on the sport. You cannot justify, I want that bag. If you're putting forth a product like that, that's the problem. It's not just piracy. I'm not pinning this on the fans exclusively. It's not just piracy. It's the fighters as well. They've changed. They all want to be entitled bitches and businessmen. And, and unfortunately, neither demographic neither faction is willing to concede no one's willing to give it in an inch and i'm sick of hearing this bullshit from fighters we risk our lives no you're not no you're not i'm risking my life more than you are just driving to the damn arena to see you stink out the joint correct me if i'm wrong I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna put this in the in the in the tab of you we we definitely think alike. I and yeah, it was a stink fest. Um but I don't ever want to see another Dooku Kim in my lifetime. And I've already seen seen it three times since then. You know? And it's and that's unfortunate. So that being said. I have no, if I know a boxer has, you know, an extended number of tools in his belt, and he doesn't just fight that way. Uh, case in point, Mayweather, after he, after he beat uh, De La Hoya, all right? And he shows me that he has an extensive tool belt, and he fights different fighters with different styles. I'm still interested. I'm still interested. But if he's well, only going to fight that way and bore us to death, yeah, I agree with you 100%. Yep. But I, in, in, in the De Los Santos fight, seriously, I do think his, his options were very limited. Okay. Okay. Because if you he know, got in that well, ring and, and got in the pocket with the, the uh, if he would have got into the pocket with De Los Santos, the way you're talking about, Okay, EJ, let me put things in its proper perspective. And I understand what you're saying. And thank you, brother, for having the concern for our beloved prize fighters. But if you were Shakur Stevenson's age and if you were his in, sh in, in his shape, would you take Dude, I'd a... I'd be fighting three times, four times a year. <laughs> exactly. Would you actually mind taking shots if you were getting paid millions of dollars? That comes He's with the territory. Age, that's, look, look, that's... Age. Got uh, EJ. That's what these guys signed up for. 
Okay, that's why we fell in love with boxing. True. We were in yeah, all of these yeah, guys. Yeah. We were in all of these guys. They were superhuman in our minds when we were kids. We couldn't believe that what they put their bodies through. And Double L has the beat. This isn't ballet. It's not square <laughs> dancing. This is a fight. And I'm going to go back to once again, my brother told me. Correct. Called me crazy. But I usually like to see more fight in my fights. It's a fight at the end of the day. And we're in all of these guys, what they're able to put their bodies through. It's almost superhuman. But so lately, maybe, but well, lately, well, lately, we haven't seen anything that resembles that. Think about what made you first fall in love with the sport to begin with. Now, once again. There is a way to change that. Um, yeah. Fighters. All of these entitled bitches who are holding the sport hostage by demanding these absurd paychecks. Sit their ass on the bench. We don't need you. Start paying the fighters and giving them these big opportunities. Guys like Gustavo Lemos, someone who is willing to lay it all on the line for our entertainment. And that's exactly what he did. And that was a great fight. That was an excellent fight. Okay. The boxing, boxing scholar. The boxing scholar just came in. So here are the numbers, sir. I'm going to write this down. So, well, I'm going to read this once again. And I attribute this. And I want to thank our brother, James Bell, for breaking the news. Guys, if you haven't already, please go bookmark. The box or the boxing source.net. The boxing source.net. Okay. Now I'm going to share this screen once again. He, this was his article and he just published this today. Okay. I'm going to read this. Can you guys see it? Can you Hold see on, it? AJ? I got a loading screen. Now, now I see it. Okay. Very good. So here it is. The word is that the amount of buys within the U.S. market. We're below 30,000. Guys, that's not a misprint. Because I was keeping the number, the figure that I was I received close to the vest. And I was like, this can't be right. And when I read this, yep, it was confirmed. The word is that the amount of buys within the U.S. market were below 30,000. Big shout out to my brother, J.R. Bell. Great work, my man. 30 well, below. No, no, no. It's not 30,000. Below 30,000. Okay? And this is, I'm going to disclose the number that I was given. Okay? And James's report just confirmed it. Thank you, James. And once again, um, this is credible. Because James has relationships, very good ones with everyone in the business. He's been in this business for over a decade. And this is the reason why we love him on this show. Because he's such an affable, hardworking guy that everyone is willing to give him an interview and confide in Big James. He's a real dude. He's a real boxing guy. He's not just a YouTuber. He goes out and covers all these events. Now, I'm going to disclose my number to anyone who's just joining the show. Do you guys see that? Yeah, 23 k that's, that's the number that I was given, and it was confirmed with James's article today. So thank you, James, for breaking the news, my friend. Thank you Jeff, for having the stones to actually break the news. And once again, James, because he has so many great relationships in this business, he's objective and he's fair and he is very pro boxing. He is pro health of the sport. He doesn't play favorites. He doesn't pit one faction over another. He's not a promotional pom-pom waiver like most of these assholes on YouTube. 
This is a guy who tells it like it is, and he reports. He's an old school badass journalist who merely reports. So, guys, do yourselves a favor. Please bookmark my brother, boxingsource.net. And once again, I'll attach the article in the link when we're finished with this show. Hey, big shout out to my brother, Champ Ross. Thank you for joining us, sir. And also, Jose Varela. Thank you for joining us, my friend. Boxing Scholar also says, I wonder how many people watched the prelims because of their subscriptions and didn't buy. That card was better than we thought, and it would be, honestly, than we thought it would be. Yep. So once again, anyone who's stinking on the prelims and the undercard for Canelo Munguia, how do you know it's going to be bad? The fights haven't played out yet. Guys, judge slowly and quit rationalizing why you should steal this shit and start rationalizing why you should financially support your supposed favorite pastime. Stop it. We've had enough. EJ, we're over an hour in, brother. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to talk about? Because I'm all talked out of this um, very dismal topic if you're a fan of the sport because this is not good guys do you have any questions or anything that you um i do have a question i do have a question is maybe a way to change these uh the way these kids box nowadays yeah because if you want to change the way they box and get more and not and not give us a bore fest Okay, yes, 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 yes. And I'm glad you asked that, EJ. That's an excellent question, my friend. That's an excellent question. Now I'm going to tell you. One, do you know why most of these fans or fighters who are on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, on social media, do you know why they feel the way? Do you know why they want to break the bank whenever they're presented with a real challenge? which forces the fight on pay-per-view because they want a small fortune for taking a real challenge in the ring. Do you know why they feel that way? Because the fans, as soon as they get a loss, right? As soon as they get one loss, you guys, you guys treat them like hot garbage and call them damaged goods. Oh, he might as well retire. He just got his ass whooped. Oh, Errol Spence. Oh, he's done. Stick a fork in him. He'll never be back. That was a career-altering punishment he took. Oh, he sucks now. Oh, I don't ever want to see Earl Spence again. He might as well retire. You know what? Stop it. That's that's inherently wrong with the average boxing fan. When we were young, when we were young, when we were growing up, was there any shame in taking a loss at the elite level? No. In fact, taking a loss made you better. Marvin Hagler. That's all you got to say. That's it. He took a loss and made sure he didn't leave it in the judge's hands after that. So why is it the apocalypse now for every fighter who takes a mere L? Because of, and I hate to say it, Mayweather and his and 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 his blueprint. Honestly, well, it, well, if fans are so educated and they understand the sweet science, then quit it. Okay, that's one reason. That's one way you guys can change the culture. That's one way. So in other words, okay, instead of treating these guys like hot garbage for getting a mere loss, say, hey, you know what? This guy, I can't wait to see him again. A guy like Gustavo Lemos, even though he um, got the short end of this decision against Richardson Hitchens. Man, hey, I can't wait to see him again. Right, that's exactly how I feel. Exactly. That's how I feel. Exactly. And I try to explain I try to explain to the to the other boxing fans that I hang out with, which is a lot, you know that. I hang out in almost all the, the, the YTBC channels. My and, and I try to explain, stop thinking that they're hot garbage. I I didn't give up on Spence. I was not a Spence fan, but I knew the kid had talent. I don't give up on him. Everyone, oh, he's garbage now, just like you said. But a big, a, another thing I was going to ask you, um, 
Well, I'm not finished. There is oh, that's yeah, right. only one way, right? And because these because I, I've noticed this trend among officials, referees, and state state athletic commissions mm -hmm. that ever since the tragic Magomed Abdusalamov incident in New York several years ago against Gomez in the heavyweight division, he suffered a brain bleed. And that changed the way officials, especially in New York, treat a prize fighter and a prize fight. As soon as someone gets hurt, they're looking to step in and stop the action. Now, think about the way referees treat fights and how quickly they want to pull the trigger, seemingly. Think about, in comparison, Gaddy Ward. Did Frank Cappuccino, was he looking to pull it, pull the trigger and call a halt to the bout? Or were we gifted to one of the most breathtaking displays of action in the ring? Think about Corrales Castillo, Tony Weeks back in the day, before he was damaged goods as a referee. Think about that 10th round in Corrales Castillo, giving Diego Corrales every benefit of the doubt that he could continue. And we were gifted to one of the most dramatic endings of the unification bout ever. Now think about the, the way refs treat these fights now. Does that, you think, indirectly and directly affect how a price fight, what kind of risks he's willing to take in the ring? So I can't pin this all on the fans. Unfortunately, because of the tragic Magomed incident, referees, they've become less liberal in the ring. They've become more conservative and more protective as a result. See, I was going to go a different route. Uh, Let's hear it. Let's hear it, my friend. Go ahead. Another way to stop Another way to stop rewarding bad uh, um, um, bad product is stop rewarding these boxers with with gifted fights. Uh, you know these these, these ridiculous uh, scorecards that we've seen over the years. You know, that was one of the reasons why I gave up on boxing. Uh, I want to oh, say. You now, now you're starting to sound like a casual man. No, 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 no. Listen, no, listen no, to EJ, what I'm saying. Li okay, listen, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Uh, listen to what I'm saying. There, are, there, have been, there have been some very controversial scorecards that I've seen. And, and the winner wins. Yeah, no doubt. They definitely won. But then you see these ridiculous scores um, that what fight were they watching? And it wasn't the same fight I watched. And does it affect how you view a fighter? Does it affect how I view a fight? No, I, I, I view uh, no, then, then dude, it's, it's not even worth harping on. And this but, is another I, thing that fans do religiously. You know, it's a subjective process. Okay. And once again, and most fans who bellyache about robberies and, Oh, I can't believe what fight this guy was watching. Most of them, if you ask them, mm -hmm. don't even know what the scoring criteria is. This is where I was. This was the point I was getting to. I'm sorry. Um, I'm it, sorry. It, you, EJ. That, I'm, that was the point. I'm sorry. I'm on my the criteria spot, is what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, EJ. I'm going to get off my soapbox. Go ahead. The floor is yours. My no, I, no, my I, I apologize. No, it, it's not that. It, it's something that has been bothering me, Joseph. And I'm, it's not you know. And I apologize if I if I've been disrespectful. No, 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 no. You have you've been a gracious, gracious co-host tonight. And my apologies for just just getting on my soapbox and 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 um uh well anyway, man. I'm sorry. The floor is yours, brother. Please it, it elaborate I, on your thoughts. But what what I'm trying to say is that um there are there there's like you said, maybe. I'm thinking if you change the criteria and the score, the, the way the, 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 the scores are tallied up, I, I got no problem with the three knockdown rule. I don't got a problem with it, with the 10 point score, the eight point and everything like that. I got no problem with that. What I have a problem with 
is okay. If you make make something more valuable in the scoring process, I mean, a more aggressive fighter, a more uh, uh, a, a boxer that puts more output and is definitely the aggressor, maybe he should get in in the judges in, in the on the judges card, uh, you know, more point on a give 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 another factor in there or take away. You know, uh, what, what, what's one of the criteria? Give me a okay, second. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go down. You understand the, what I'm trying to say? I'm not uh, good at Of course at I do. Of course I do. And that's the way the – this is a reason why in amateur boxing they move to a more professional type scoring system because the point system, that was encouraging guys to just pick and poke from the, from mid to long range and not really sit down on their shots. And it made for a very – difficult transition into the pro style right so the way it's here's the scoring criteria guys and i know this because i know a lot of different judges and and i've i've picked their brains and i uh, here it is is very very simple and unfortunately some judges make this a lot more intricate and difficult than it need be so do fans. Here it is. It's very simple, guys. Okay? Very, very simple. Um, first of all, let me just extend my apologies. EJ, you've been great, man, today. And I'm sorry if I've been cutting you off, my friend. And you're very knowledgeable, and I love you, man. So God bless you, and thank you for hanging with me. And I'm sorry if I seem to have a bone to pick with fans. That's not the case. I'm just fed up with the business of it. So here's the scoring criteria, guys. It's the primary scoring criteria is clean, effective, and consequential punches landed. That's what makes it subjective. And that's exactly what you were alluding to. Put a bigger emphasis on clean, effective, and consequential punches. But once again, beauty is the eye of the uh, eye of the holder, right? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? So what is effective and consequential to you? Now, once again, all the judges aren't on the same side of the ring. They're on opposite sides. They're on three different sides of the ring, which means their vision could be hindered if the action is on the opposite corner. That's why we have a three-judge system. But let me tell you, when you're in that corner and when you're at ringside and when you're on that ring apron, you can feel the impact of a clean shot. It sounds like a bass drum. Boom! I mean, you feel the impact of it. It's quite jarring. So it's clean, effective, and consequential punching that's what you focus on. And if you can't determine a winner from that, then you go to the secondary scoring criteria and it's usually a tiebreaker. And it's either or, effective aggression or ring generalship. And the reason why it's a tiebreaker, because if you're controlling range, if you're controlling a range and a and and directing, um, you're the ring general, you're actually controlling range and affecting the action of the fight, then that usually means that your punches and your action, activity, is actually more effective and consequential. Does that make sense? Because that's it, guys. That's it. That's all it is. And why on earth do fans and even judges Try to make it more difficult than need be because it's very simple. Like I, I'll never forget the first time I ever talked to Harold Letterman. God rest his soul. Great guy. I asked him, well, gosh, that's a, that's a, that's a tough job being a judge. He goes, oh, not really. How huh, you see two guys beat the hell out of each other. And the one who does the most damage wins. He's right on the money. He's right on the money. And when you can't tell who does the most damage or the most effective and consequential work, 
you look at the see who you look and see who the one is controlling range, who's pushing the action, who's getting the better of the exchanges, who's imposing his will on the other fighter. And that's the one who wins the tiebreaker and carries the round. So you're absolutely right, EJ. Unfortunately, some of these judges like CJ Ross, Adelaide Bird, um, Patricia Morse Jarman, they try oh, to make this. Word. Yeah, I picked the three worst uh, to yeah. make it. Oh, and Moretti, but, you got to put Moretti up there, though. <laughs> oh, gosh, Moretti. That's why. Dave Dave Moretti? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, Dave Moretti, when's the last time you've seen him score a big fight? Uh, the, 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 the Lomachenko Andy, Andy fight. Lomachenko, yep. When's the yep. last time you, you haven't seen him since in a big event, have you? <laughs> yeah, I, did so, I ever show so, you what so my guys, scorecards look like? So, so, yeah, let's see it. These are what my scorecards look like. And, it, and I throw scores up there, you know? These are what my scorecards look like, right? When I when I'm when I'm judging a fight and I'm not actually taking and, and the time I, and I know fight. you're using the same exact criteria that I just spelled out, aren't you? Yeah. Exactly. You're a knowledgeable fight fan. You're a lifer, brother. You know what you're looking at in the ring. So once again, be that ambassador, EJ. Educate the casual and mainstreams that you watch fights with. You will transform them into diehard, passionate fans. But once again, it's not just all on the fans. It's not just all on you guys. The fighters need to do their part. The commission members need to do their part. The referees need to do their part. And give these fighters every benefit of the doubt rather than stepping in and calling a halt to the action. As soon as a fight starts heating up, Woo! The referee waves it off. Guys, that's bullshit. These guys walk through fire, put their bodies through hell in training camp. And for a referee to call a halt to the bout very quickly, to have a quick trigger finger, that's not good enough for me. That's not good enough. So everyone has to do their part. Like I stated earlier in the show, the biggest thing wrong with the sport is everyone is acting in their own best interest and not considering the health of the sport. Right? That's you're, the biggest that's problem. Right. I think I think I think you're you're hitting the nail on the head there. I just wish there was something we can do. And maybe one day, Joseph, you and I can talk about the YouTube thing and you tell me if it's an idiot idea or if it's a Guys in the chat, please understand. I I pride myself on knowing boxing and having some boxing knowledge, but no, but at no time do I ever feel like I'm better than anyone else because I'm 58 and I still feel like I'm learning every day. And I make sure I keep my nose out of the business end, in which I I think that's been a mistake. I, I'm starting now to realize that's been a mistake and actually get more into the business end when maybe I'll understand more of this politics that's going on. But I'm a pure boxing fan through and through. You sure through are, through. brother. And you're a credit to the sport. Else. And you're a credit to the sport, brother. And that's why you continue learning because you're humble. I wish every fan remained humble and respectful. Like I just heard the most disgusting display on Twitter whatever you call it, X. This guy yeah. is arguing with Shakur Stevenson, one of the best technical fighters in boxing. And he's saying, I'm going to pull up at your gym. How's that? And, oh, my gosh, man. When did fans become so disrespectful? When did they become these freaking ridiculous, idiotic, and ignorant trolls? Because they have the anonymity of a computer screen in front of them and never think any, oh, they, they, they'll never have anything to, I, to, uh, what, to go for. You're absolutely right about that. And EJ, credit to you, man, for being a great ambassador for the sport. This is why I always love speaking with you live. You well, are a credit. You are one of the few YouTube boxing community members that I love speaking with. And that's not a joke. He's just being kind because I don't know. No, 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 I'm, 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 <laughs> no, stop it. No, I'm being truthful, guys. Like we would all be wise to remain humble and respectful to all of these prize fighters. And once again, judge slowly, guys. 
wait till the fights play out. And when these guys do come up short, either by way of knockout or by decision, hey, you know what? Thank them for pulling it all, leaving it all in the ring for our entertainment. It's for our entertainment, guys. Quit crucifying these guys for coming up short on fight night. Yeah, okay, really? maybe the maybe they'll be more willing to take more risks in the ring. Exactly. And that's it, guys. We're almost 90 minutes in. And um, yeah, I don't think I have any more to offer. But I will say this, in case you did not get the news, I'm going to read this one more time. Guys, I'm going to read this. Hey, it's Io. What's happening, my brother? How have you been? Oh, that's my brother, IOTBA. Guys, go please support IOTBA Boxing Talk and the Spit Bucket. They do a great job. They're great ambassadors for the sport. So I'm going to read this one more time, guys, in case you're late to the program, right? So here it is. I'm sharing this. And this was, once again, care of my brother, James Bell, from theboxingsource.net. Guys, if you want all of the latest insider information, please bookmark my friend, James Bell, from theboxingsource.net, theboxingsource.net. Okay, and here it is just published today. The word is that the amount of buys within the U.S. market for Tim Zhu versus Sebastian Fundora were below 30,000 pay-per-view purchases. Do you see that, guys? I'm highlighting it. The word is that the amount of buys within the U.S. market were below 30,000 purchases. That's not an exaggeration, guys. In fact, he's being nice. Once again, I'm going to post my number, the one that I got, and I thought it was a joke. I said, there's no way that this could be right. But when I read this, it was confirmed. James is actually being nice when he says below 30,000. Okay. And I'm going to write it right now. That's the number that I got, guys. That's the number that I got. It's, it's sobering, isn't it? So, yeah. Tyco TV, you've got the beat. Look, and I know this is a popular sentiment, and it seems very bleak. PBC done. But guys, um, in my opinion, this is where they screwed up. EJ, correct me if I'm wrong, sir. You know, this is the this is the no, all, no, no. This is correct me if I'm wrong. You're listening. Correct me if I'm wrong. In my opinion, PBC should have never started their inaugural campaign with Amazon Prime with Tim Zhu versus Sebastian Fundora. Oh, you're absolutely right. <laughs> they should have started off with Canelo versus Munguia and then followed it up immediately with Tank Davis versus Frank Martin, David Benavides, Alexander Gvostik. Oh, no, you're absolutely right. Because yeah. I didn't this, think they were going to do that. Because this right here, 23,000 purchases, leaves a very Bad taste in the mouths of everyone at Amazon Prime. So, guys, thank you all for joining us. And huge round of applause, man, from my brother EJ. Yeah, hey, you know what? Thank you. To you, brother. thank you. Thank you for being the humble, great ambassador. Um, for boxing, for our beloved boxing. Keep on doing what you do, EJ. And we can't wait to get you back on the air on a regular basis. And guys, if you haven't already, please go support my brother, EJ. And please go uh, subscribe to his channel. Um, Double L says, can a future Spence versus Thurman fight do anything? Brother Spence, do you see how big he looked? Dude, he, look, he looked like a biscuit shy of heavyweight. 
realistically. I love it when you say that. <laughs> like, like, re- like, like, dude, realistically. <laughs> like, like, re- realistically. <laughs> dude, can he, can he, can he make, when do you think he's going to be able to compete at junior middleweight? Uh, uh, next year? <laughs> Look, well, yeah, sometime next year if he has that <laughs> hunger still. But after making a career high payday and after stiffing his trainer, I don't think so. So oh, I, yeah. is that, that, that going to be settled? Is he going to pay him? Uh, or no? From what I've been told, it's already been settled, but I can't guarantee that. Right. But, but Io has the beat. Maybe he says, I see nothing after Canelo Joseph. You know what, brother? There's a reason. There's a reason why tank versus Martin hasn't been announced. Do you see tickets going on sale two months before the event? No. And do you know why? Because if this event, Canelo versus Munguia, flops as well, PBC is OOB. That's out of business to you and I. PBC is OOB if this fight isn't a commercial success. And that's it, guys. I want to thank all of you for joining EJ and myself this evening and guys god bless all of you and i see you there hld god bless you in case you just joined us the number is less than thirty thousand purchases as um reported by my brother james from the boxing source and my number is twenty three thousand. god bless all of you guys in case you um just joined us please rewind we have a geyser of information for you guys um, on behalf. Well, EJ, please give us your parting shots for this wonderful Thursday evening, sir. Sure thing. Listen, guys, um, <laughs> Joseph touched upon this, but I'm going to make sure that I swing this out the park. Stop giving up on fighters just because they lose their zero. If we, if we, if you continue to give up on fighters that lose their zero, we wouldn't have gotten. Tio Pimo versus fucking Taylor. Okay, stop it. There's still stuff there. The greatest boxers had losses. The greatest boxers had losses. Ali had losses. Uh, uh, Joe Frazier had losses. You know, you, you, you got to stop it. Stop giving up on these guys because they lose the zero. The zero is inconsequential to the man's career don't give up. That's that's all I'm going to part with. Stop giving up on them boxers. Ah, truer words were never spoken. Thank you, EJ. And once again, keep doing what you do, my friend. And um, EJ, guys, if you um, want to help a brother out, please, please donate to EJ. Um, throw up, please, your toss up your in the comment section. Toss up your cash app. Um, address as well. Once again, please. Guys, if you uh, want to help a brother out, please reach deep down in your pockets and donate to EJ. Okay? He's a gentleman who always gives back to boxing. Okay? Always gives back to our beloved boxing. Please help him out if you can. Uh, guys, on B- uh, do you have it on the comment section yet, sir? Yeah, no, yeah I do right there. Very good. Very good. There it is, guys. Electrojed65 on Cash App. Please feel generous and please give to EJ. Okay? Um, We all want to be here for our brother. Guys, on behalf of Electrojed, I'm Joseph Heron. You've been listening to War Week Boxing. Have a great evening, everybody.
Rod Vashon Holdings proudly presents Warwick Radio Chats with ring announcer Joseph Herring.